Welcome, I'm going to walk you through how to log into Buzz as well as creating a folder, assessment, and just basic what you need to get started to have use of a blended environment. If you're in the Twin Falls School District, you'll need to have this ISD 411 and then the remaining. Nevertheless, if you type in tinyurl.com forward slash buzz 411, I've created a hyperlink for the students to log in. You'll notice a difference. One says teacher, one says student. Okay, so we're on the teacher login because we're going to create a, your blended environment. Log in with your username and password. Okay, now you'll see in here I have three classes. My summer school, my new for this year, and we are going to collaborate in sixth grade and have just a prime time folder to help share resources and information. We're going to have one folder for all sixth grade for that. Okay. One thing, once you clicked on your icon, you should have noticed it opens up. You have your home button. Click that. It takes you right back to the home screen. Going back into prime time. You have what's called your thread. It tells you where you're at. And of course, the good old fashioned back button. But for now, again, prime time. Now, this screen kind of looks a little crowded to me. I'd have to scroll around. Over here, this is your sidebar. To be able to see more, you hide your sidebar by clicking that button. Now, I just have buttons up here. That's one of the benefits of Buzz is that it's really simple. Just by clicking a button, you're good to go. So I'm going to click, because we're going to build our curriculum, I'm going to click on Curriculum Map. Okay. Right now, I have some folders in here, and I have some hidden folders. That's what the little I means, the little crossed off I. This is more supplies for me, and of course, what my students are going to see is not hidden. So, I've already clicked, I've already created a primetime folder. Um, just a simple thing on how for them to get started. I was just looking at my preview and see what it says. It talks about what the different icons mean. Okay. And going on. In this folder is also directions for students on how to be successful with a blended environment. Okay. Um, one thing is we are going to emphasize that students are checking their emails. Sixth grade has a Gmail account that's been put on and last year when I had my primetime students check their grades they also check their emails and quite a few teachers if you send from PowerSchool it goes to their Gmail account. And in here we also have an ac academic honesty page. Okay, where they're going to go through, download the document right here, the contract, read it and submit it all in one place. Again, the purpose of doing this for sixth grade is just having one location for the students to go through instead of having to repeat this when they're in math class, when they are in social studies class, or any other class that they might have to go into. Okay, what you need to know though, that was just a little simple click, click, click here. I'm, let's add a unit. That means adding a folder. Okay, you can call them modules. Maybe we say this test module. Uh, I like units better. 
because that's what we go by a lot. So I'll say test unit. I'm going to say add. Okay, just give me a folder. Well, that doesn't help me much. What if I would have said test unit 2 and I did add and edit? It gives me this information. You will see this is where you could choose whether they're visible or not and where you're going to place it. Really? Honestly? Don't worry about the add and edit because you're going to be editing your paper, your folders anyway. Sorry, I clicked before I explain. Over here on the pencil, if I would have clicked that button, it opens up the same exact image you saw before. There's nothing to do. It's just a folder. This is telling what the folder is going to do. Whether it's visible or not, whether you're going to restrict visibility by mastery. Say you had a folder before it pretest unit and they had to master that folder before they can come to this one. I could have it hidden and as soon as the student is ready, the folder will become visible. That is a wonderful technique I used in the summer, in summer school, and it was nice. Because then the students were just clicking around, going back and forth. Okay, this is what you need to know to be able to add your content. Okay, test unit. You're not going to click on the pencil. Like I said, the pencil is just going to tell what the folder does, not what's inside the folder. How do you know it's inside the folder? You look in the folder. So click in the folder. Well, this does not look anything like when I showed you the other folder we looked in. I could cl create from here. Oh my goodness, look at all those different things. But I'm going to say, nope. Because Buzz and IDLA has created a wonderful library for you to use. In that library, you can get resources from various places. And you can put it into Buzz, which is what's nice. Khan Academy with a lot of our math and science teachers. Here you go. Well, we're building our online platform. So the only thing we need to worry about is called templates. So you go to your library, you go to templates. In the templates you're going to go to course templates. You want to go into header templates. Okay. Of course you can investigate and look around and go further into other ones but right now we're just getting the basics. Okay. In the templates let's say you want to do a uh, pre-test, post-test. I know it's the very basics of a blended environment, but at least it will help with you getting practice manipulating buzz. So we're going to create an assessment. You can preview it, or you can click here and create a copy without looking, or you can click and still preview. One of the nice things with Buzz is up here you can see that that checkbox you can do it in this view as well. Okay, this icon is always the icon for assessments. They will always give you like a little introduction if you don't want to mess with it. Good details, you don't have to, especially with assessments. But you always have those kids. Okay, what, when my test is done, what do I do? This is great spot to put that in. Okay, so we're going to say, yes, I want that one. Create the copy. Now, I'm going to actually just close this box down because I really don't want it. If I went in there and I said, okay, let me do a, where is my assessment? There it is. Okay. And I'll say fun. Add. 
let's look and see what that looks like. It's blank. It's boring. It's not there. Whereas this one, with using the templates, they give you that cute little icon, which the kids are going to get used to seeing no matter what classroom they go to. If it's a test, they will see this thing icon and directions. So, do we want to find and add something from here? Nope. Why work harder than you have to? By the way, it's really easy to delete things if you make a mistake. Okay, so we're going to edit our template assessment. I clicked on the pencil. In there, now, it's going to give me a variety of things. One is this wonderful tool right here. Do not change it, do not type into it, do not do anything to it. How you change the what the name is is you click up here into the title. We're going to say fun test. Okay. Then I can say introduction uh, welcome to sixth grade social studies. Sixth grade. Sorry, I always get social studies stuck into it because that's what I teach. Uh, how to complete this assignment. Or you're going to start the test. Um, answer honestly and be happy. I can say read my AR book. You can do anything you want with that. Now there's two things. One, these one, two, threes, they are here, but in reality, I personally don't like it like that. I would rather have it automatically labeling so a lot of times when I do my assessments, I'm giving my directions, I'll go ahead and just delete those one, two, and threes and use the button here for that. Okay, again, it doesn't matter. However you do it, it's your classroom. Now, to create the questions, come over here. There's a tab up here. Just in case, back to properties. Okay, now I want to add the questions or put type in the questions. I click on the question tab. From here, you can include standards. Or I should have included the standards earlier. That's what's wonderful. Common Core standards, Idaho State standards, it's all available. I can choose between what type of question I want, how much it's worth, properties, I don't mess with that often, and preview, well yes, I use that a lot because I want to see how the question looks. Okay, let's make a multiple choice qu question. Um, this is prime time, uh, let's see. What is the time that school starts? Okay. Give some options um, before the roosters crow. Um, 7.50 a.m. Uh, when my eyes open, or let's say 8 a.m. Okay. You click in the button of the answer. Now it's done. Click Add, and I can do another question. 
let me do a true false. Oh, I'm sorry. True false would be also multiple choice. <laughs> I had a lapse in time in my memory. So dress code is not enforced at Ah, uh, at OMS, O'Leary Middle School. True, false. Okay. Now, you saw over here, when we were clicking, advanced formatting. That opens up another window. Maybe I want the word to be bolded or I want to change the color of the word. Okay. How about if I want to add a picture into it? A video associated with it. I can do all of that. I also can edit my feedback. Okay. You'll notice when I said edit feedback that these boxes showed up. The first box talks about this question. So maybe I'm going to have feedback about the question. Like remember or look at your agenda page 5. I really don't know at the moment because they're getting built still. Um, true. I'm sorry, that is incorrect as um, OMS has high expectations. Okay, and true, or actually correct. One thing I learned from doing feedback on true and false questions because I'll use this method a lot for reading checks is don't use right, wrong, true, false and then use the same words in the feedback. It kind of gets the kids confused. So okay let me hit save and let's preview our new item, our test. Okay, welcome to sixth grade. How to complete the assignment, it tells you here. Okay, hit start. I have two questions. Did you notice that the question I typed in first is now number two? And the first, it, that's what's wonderful about Buzz is that you can tell it to go in any order or random. So the students sitting next to each other do not have the same questions. Okay, I think that takes care of talking about or teaching you how to, one, add a unit. We're gonna go back. Here's our test unit or a folder. You clicked add a unit, okay? In the unit, you put type in what you want and hit add. After that, you don't need this anymore unless you're going to continue to add more. So you want to build your whole year. What I would do if it was me starting off in blended learning would at least figure out how to add the assessment questions. Okay, how to do my pre and post test. Okay, so here was my fun test. I need to now make my pre-test of it. So I'm going to copy. It copied. You'll see right up here, this little icon shows. Before, it didn't show. Kind of, it was hidden, kind of like this is. Now it's not, so hit paste. 
Now I have two fun tests, identical in every way. Okay. Oh, except they randomized the questions and the orders. Okay. Now, one would be my pretest. I clicked on the pencil to edit the item, and I'm going to put pre-assessment, and this one over here, I don't need it added to the grade book, but even if I did, I can include or exclude from final grade and of course the score can be dropped because it's a pretest, right? You also, this is what I didn't show you earlier, you can have it chosen here, pretest. Okay, one attempt, server graded, randomize a question order, randomize answers orders, and it's a formative assessment. Okay, this would probably be the area you're going to change because you do not want a student to know the correct answer of a pretest. You don't want them to know the right choice. And feedback, well, it's a pretest, so of course you do not need it. If I change my setting from pretest to check for understanding, it automatically changed here my number of temps give me an option on changing this I can do first last highest or average okay it also took off and changed these last three things so if you're not sure how to set it up the questions from here just choose what type of a template we're using and it does it for you Okay, visibility and completion, is it visible to the students? I can hide it in the assessment itself or by folder. And when the assignment is completed is when they submit it. One thing I like to have is not on a pretest, of course, but on a post test is that they require an answer to all questions. Okay, that is a nice technique to have so that you know that they didn't skip a question because they were scrolling too fast or whatever. All right, let's go ahead and hit save. And my post test, I don't need to change the name, but I can. But I am going to change my assessment settings here. Yes, I can add to gradebook. This one is included in my final grade. Passes score required. Uh, I can set a required passing score before they can go on to the next items. And of course, this is not a check for understanding. This is a unit test. Okay. One thing, if you're allowing your students to take the test as soon as they finish the items. This is a good technique because they might get started and the bell rings. If you're given a test same time all day and you can keep the kid, don't do that option. And of course this is my post test so I'm going to require an answer to all questions. Alrighty, I'm going to display feedback. Um, for the post test. Hit save. Okay, now let's take a look at